back into it. Let's get this thing rolling. It's your boy PBK Nines giving you that dog news the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it. Some ain't. Some gonna like it. Some ain't. You know what I'm saying? Some gonna like it. Some ain't. But thank you for subscribing to the channel. Comment at the bottom. Hit that notification bell. So, you know, everybody can get the, 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 the alert that the video is dropping. All right, before we get deep into that dog news, man, don't forget, don't forget that a happy dog is a healthy dog. A healthy dog is a happy dog. You know what I'm saying? If your dog is healthy, he will be happy. You know, a dog with an upset stomach, worms all in his stomach, uh, some other kind of uh, medical issue, they won't be a happy dog, you know. They won't be a happy dog. So stay up on them on vaccinations, the rabies, the heartworms, the uh, regular wormer, the fleas, and all the other stuff. Because at the end of the day, like I said, healthy dog is a happy dog. All right. And for those who've been following my training with my Dutch Shepherd GW, you know, if you're wondering why you haven't seen GW over the past few weeks or whatever, it's because. It's because. And... I really didn't want to do any videos because it was kind of hard for me. You know, it was kind of hard for me because, and that's one thing that I hate about training a dog for a certain period of time, my own dog, and then, you know, a dog that I know I'm, you know, training for the sale because you get adapted to them. You get used to them, and, you know, that's not, that's always not a good feeling when you're making that departure. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, my boy GW, I had a little talk with him before, I left, before he left, you know what I'm saying? I told him, you got to represent for the Bay when you go. Got to represent for Pelican Bay. So, you know, like I said, right now GW's in France. GW's in France. He, he all the way across the water. He's not even in the country no more. You know what I'm saying? Hello, bro. How are you? That's blue. Simba. Bonjour, papa. Hey, blue. Oui. Merci, pas bouger. Oui. And uh, I had to make a decision, you know, far as a, a few things, you know what I'm saying? I looked at it like, you know, yeah, I'm losing, you know, GW, but at the same time, uh, he gonna represent Pelican Bay in a whole nother continent, you know what I'm saying? A whole nother continent. But I know the brother in France who got GW is going to send me videos and pictures of him later on down, you know, as he grows in life. And I'll keep y'all informed of what GW is doing over there in the big uh, EU. And shout out to the subscriber that asked me, and I told you I was going to put on the next video. When it comes to raw feed and uh, kibble, you know what I'm saying? My opinion, like, I, you know, I think I did a video a while back, but, you know, a lot of people haven't seen it. But when it comes to raw and kibble, you know, just my on um, with my dog, I'm feeding them kibble. You know, I tried the raw and all that stuff like that. You know, but I didn't have real good success with the raw with the raw feed. You know, and I found out it was a little more tiring than just going to get my kibble, getting a, a good grade of kibble and feeding them that. You know what I'm saying? The raw, if you know what you're doing, as far as the defrosting and making sure you know that chicken and everything right, and make sure. If you, if you know what you're doing with that raw, you know, the raw probably be best for the dog. Because I'm quite sure, you know, as far as a, a dog, actual raw food is going to be better than some processed dog food. You know what I'm saying? Processed dog food ain't no telling what's in half that food. And all the ingredients they say in the back of the bag ain't in half that food. So the raw is going to definitely give you, you know, the right nutrients and the right stuff. You just got to make sure you know what you're doing as far as the throw out process and making sure you know you got that, that that food right for that dog to put in his system you know other than that you know i'm just sticking to the kibble myself i'm sticking to the kibble because i did feed my dog raw one time and he got sick not like sick where he's about to die but he was like i noticed he, his appetite went for a day or so you know and i snatched him back off of it and threw him back on the kibble and everything went back, you know, everything went back right or whatever. But I don't know if it's because I thought it out wrong or I didn't thaw it out enough or I don't know what it was, but it's just too much for me. I just got to stick with the kibble. And I'm just playing out being honest. You know, some folk can 
put that thing together and make that thing right every single day. Had a little portion set up, you know, how they gonna feed them every single day. And it, it works for them. And like I said, you're gonna get the better nutrients probably, you know, not probably, you're gonna get the better nutrients from the raw setup, you know, than the dog food. But, uh, you know, everybody's different. You gotta just put in the count where, uh, how much time you got, how much patience you got, uh, all different things, you know what I'm saying? Money, this, this and that, because sometimes the raw, it depends on how many dogs you're feeding, you know what I'm saying? Another thing, how many dogs you're feeding. But sometimes, like, for instance, if I'm feeding one dog, the raw is going to be cheaper for me to feed the raw than it is for the dog food. Because I go spend $40, $50 on a $50 bag, you know, and I take that same $40, $50, get it in raw food, I'm going to get way more food and nutrients and proteins to feed my dog with that. You know, so it just depends on basically the lifestyle and what you're trying to do and what's going to fit what you're trying to do, you know. Because the raw don't fit me, but it may fit you perfect. It may fit you perfect. Just because, you know, where the man got his phenomenal dog from, there's still an open kennel where you can go back and, and buy the dog's ancestors or the dog's cousins or something. Yeah, it'd be great, you know, to have that blood, or particular blood, but that ain't that particular dog. That dog genes might be different as far as his genes the same, but like I said, he might be the start of a new era, a new era. But you, you're going around him. You're going around him because you'd rather go to the source and try to replicate him, try to duplicate him, you know, and you never get it. You never get it. Sometimes you just got to, you know, stop trying to, uh, uh, beat the best as far as outdo the best and just join the best. You know what I'm saying? The be you, you, every, everybody wants to, and I don't mean this in competition-wise. I mean, like I said, the man got the best right here, but he got his dog from a kennel that's still open, that's still selling dogs. Now, everybody else got dogs, but nobody dog has stood out the way this particular dog stood out. Nobody dog stood out the way this particular dog stood out, okay? Now that this one stood out, people started to hear about it, but everybody want to go to the source. Oh, let's go get a dog from so-and-so. He the one uh, made that so-and-so dog. Or oh, he the one made that so-and-so dog. Nobody dog comes out like, bruh dog. Nobody that goes to that kennel gets a dog that produces like bruh dog. So with us doing that, that's going to just keep on having us going in circles, buying the same old stuff over and over again, buying the same old stuff over and over again, getting the same results, going around in circles when you instead of uh, paying attention to the great ones. You know what I'm saying? All the great ones don't be great in six months. All the great ones ain't great in a year, you know? Some of the curves are great in the first year. Some of the biggest curves ever are, 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 the, are the best dogs in the first six months. First seven months, they're the best dogs in the first seven months. You think the world of them. But they're the biggest curves. Biggest curves. Okay, all right now. Something else I noticed. Anybody who, you know, been dealing with me with the dogs, y'all remember when I had Champion Little Country? You know, Champion Little Country, okay? And I had them on Facebook and all kind of things. Something I noticed from then to now, and y'all been noticing it probably way before then. It's one guy, one, you know, you know it's, it's, it's a few of them, but it's one particular guy that be on that yellow board, you know what I'm saying? He be on some more too, but he be on that yellow board. And, you know, when I had a little country, that was years ago. Not like back in the days, but at least about uh, four years ago, okay? This brother started with me then about my dog. He started with other brothers about their dog, you know? This is way before Buck City got knocked off. You know, Buck City ended up going down. You know, a black brother that I know, you know, had a conversation with this dude on YouTube, uh, Facebook back and forth different times. I seen it when I was looking at the message boards. You know what I'm saying? This brother still knocking the boards with the uh, uh, YouTube channels with the dog. Like, why is his name still being called up for, for harass, like basically harassing the dog man? And what I'm seeing is, it's jealousy. You know what I'm saying? You got your dog. What you claim you got your dog. You know what I'm saying? 
but we don't see nothing from your dog since then. Your dog ain't got no reputation, doing nothing good, period. All you do is get on the board, and from what it looked like, he throw heat your way. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I see his name when it, I heard them boys that got the, um, you know, the YouTube channel, uh, the, the dog things talking about. Him. I said, damn, this, this, this nigga here just go from board hating to Facebook hating to real life hating. You know what I'm saying? I went, like I said before, you know, when they threw my picture up on uh, Facebook, with my real name and all that stuff up on Facebook. Like I said before, I wouldn't doubt, you know what I'm saying? If he the one got half of that heat, you know what I'm saying? Looking towards Buck City. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even doubt it. Everybody know him. I ain't gonna say a thing because I'm getting money like I told him before. And like I told him, get back ain't got no date on it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know him. His first name started with L, second name started with a B. That's all I gotta say. You know what I'm saying? Millions of people in the, in the world name started L and B. We don't, you can't say who I'm talking about, but the dog man knew who I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? That brother sending heat your way now. He's sending heat your way. I don't see no dog in him. You know what I'm saying? He ain't about all that dog. That he about hating, jealousy, sending the heat your way. You know what I'm saying? Sending the heat your way. I see brothers posting nice dogs on all the boards every day. You know what I'm saying? But this one particular dog, man, you know, LB, don't post nothing. He posts dogs here and there. But he ain't got no, he ain't got no, uh, nothing to bring to the table. He ain't bringing nothing to the table, but from what it looks like, he's taking away from the dog table. He's taking away from the dog table with nothing to bring to the table. So a lot of the times, y'all brothers be thinking, it be Chico switching up his, uh, tag, getting up on your check. A lot of times it be LB. A lot of times it be LB switching up his name, getting up in your check. Cause he's just as big as hater as Chico is when it comes to, uh, really, He's a bigger hater because he don't got nothing going on like how Chico got going on. You know what I'm saying? He just a hating dog man with nothing going on. Chico, you know, he got his stuff going on, but, you know, he do his hating. But LB, he be switching his tag, getting off in everybody chat. You know what I'm saying? Getting off in everybody chat or getting off in everybody comments. When it come down to it, folk, you know, I don't know which one worse. Talking the dog game with. Brothers with open cases are talking the dog game with a jealous brother. <laughs> Cause both of them get dangerous. Big thanks to Lauderdale Outlaw and all them dog men out there, man, that's putting them dogs together and pedigrees together to give us these phenomenal dogs that we have today. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you brothers. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you brothers. Now let's switch it up real quick. Talk about a dog man that goes by the name of Burt Buckshot Sorrells. Mr. Burt Buckshot Sorrells. It's the highlight of today's topic. Now, Mr. Buckshot Burt was loved by few, but hated by many, you know? He had that zero to 100 attitude. He can go from zero to 100 any given second, any given second, all right? But Mr. Mr. Burt lived out in uh, Morano, Arizona, out in the desert, you know? Say it was like a desert oasis out there. It was a set of a movie scene where he stayed at. It was like the set of a movie scene. And they say he had one house, one particular little house out there on this property, you know, where he had a mountain lion caged up, you know, had a mountain lion caged up and had, a, uh, I guess, a little fence connected to the house or whatever. And uh, he called it the jail. And if you did anything wrong while you was there, he put you in that house. And only way you can get out is to go past that mountain line. If you can go past that mountain line, then you can get out the house. If you couldn't, then, you know, I don't know. The story didn't tell what, uh, what happened to the people that couldn't get past the mountain line. Now, just like any other dog, man, Mr. Burt has many stories that can be told about him, but I'm gonna give you one or two, you know, give you one or two. First one, um, a guy stole a dog from him, you know, and he found out who did it. He found out who stole the dog from him, and, you know, unlike many people, Mr. Burt didn't run to the house, ripping and rapping, uh, want to fight. Uh, he didn't call the police on him. He didn't catch him in the street. He didn't, uh, you know, catch him in the street, try to fight him or anything like that. He didn't say anything about his name or call around talking about him. He didn't do any of that. But Mr. Burt did hurt him. And if you don't know a man is serious after he does this to you, you don't know he's serious. What Mr. Burt did was went to the man's house who stole his dog and took his engine out of his car. 
took this whole engine out of his car and left. So if that don't let you know that man ain't playing by this dog, then you just ain't got common sense. Now, Mr. Burke was found as a young baby, you know, at a train wreck. You know, a train wreck, he was with his mama. His mama died in the train wreck. They found Mr. Burke up under the seat as a baby, you know. So he, he started staying with his father, and uh, his father was accidentally shot while walking across the street. Accidentally shot while walking across the street. So that left Mr. Burke as an orphan. Raised by his stepmother, Mr. Burke said he had an uncomfortable life. You know, and as he got a little older, he was in another train wreck where he injured his back real bad, you know. And that left him with, you know, back pains throughout the rest of his life, but he didn't let that stop him from what he, you know, needed to do. And Mr. Burke, you know, was uh, credited for raising a great family of dogs. But the thing about what Mr. Burke did, he didn't base that family of dogs on one individual dog. Now the winning group Mr. Burke managed, you know, was divided into three families, you know, basically three parts. You had the Red Jerry group, the Covino group that was represented by Boots the Blacksmith, and a group of dogs from David Kohler that made Sorrell's Bull. He was one of the old greats from the past. Maybe not everybody liked him, but everybody respected him. And if he showed up with a bulldog, everybody was worried. Everybody was worried. Now, Mr. Sorrells was considered one of the greats of all time. You know, one of the greats of all time. And the, the dogs that the group put together, you know, have their own distinctive look today. 2022 have their own distinctive look. So the, they did a great job with those family of dogs. Keeping between 75 to 100 dogs, Mr. Sorrells always knew which ones to keep, which ones to get rid of, which ones to breed, cross, and how to get the traits into the dogs by doing certain breedings that he needed. It didn't matter who you were or what y'all were competing for. When you competed against Mr. Sorrell, you were always on the front line. You was always on the front line. He was a very competitive man, very competitive. Like I said before, remembered in the game as one of the greats today in the dog game, Mr. Bert Sorrells died November the 25th, 2018. One thing I can say, the dog game from back then to now, y'all got it better because a lot of the things are out in the open for y'all to see these days in the dog game. A lot of the things that we were in the blind about is out in the open so y'all can make better decisions, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to certain things, you know, and see things more on a, a broad horizon instead of just in that little box, you know what I'm saying? The way, uh, all, especially how uh, a lot of guys are being brought to the forefront of how they paper pedal and put this and put that. Like, y'all are getting a, a, a better schooling, how can I put it, rather, than how I got when I came up. Because, you know, I thought this was that, I thought this was this, I thought this was this, and this was this. But hey, 2022, we got some, some good brothers out there that's uh, letting you know this ain't this, this ain't that, and this ain't, or this wasn't this, and this wasn't that, and this wasn't this. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just don't go hog crazy and dog crazy, you know, spending everything on uh, a pedigree. You know what I'm saying? If you like the dog, get it. But, the, you know, just don't go crazy about pedigrees. Always think before you make it, you know, don't just rush off on a good pedigree, is what I'm trying to say. You know, if you like the dog, that's a different story. But liking the pedigree before you even see the dog, you know what I'm saying, and you about to spend a lot of money on it, is where the conflict come in into play at. But thank y'all for tuning in, man. It's your boy PBK9. It's giving you that dog news the way I always do, fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't. Some gonna like it, some ain't. But I gotta keep giving it to you. That, uh, hit that comment button at the bottom. You know, hit the comments. I'm gonna comment with you. It's your boy PBK9s. I'm up out of here.